Okay, it's time to build a keg fire. I'm pretty excited about this one. It's getting very cold in my shed at the moment, so this will do nicely. I've got a few little pieces of metal. I'll take you through it when I'm doing the things, but first, let's work on this keg. First thing is the keg. Now, this is a 50 liter Carlton United Brewers keg that is stainless steel. That's important, make sure it's stainless steel. I don't know why I like these ones so much, I just do. It's kind of weird, but it is what it is. I'm gonna be putting a plate on the top here, a six mil steel plate, and that's gonna open up, allowing me to put the wood inside of the fire. And then I'm gonna have a door down here, which will allow me to get the ash out, and also adjust that door open and close to adjust the fire's intensity. Now, I do need to weld up these holes, and I've taken the liberties of depressurizing this unit already. There's plenty of videos out there for doing that. They are all slightly different. Where This one was actually quite easy. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is cut the top off of it so I can put the grill plate down inside of it and also get rid of this. And then I'll weld this back on to the main body. Okay, so we've got the lid cut off the main body off the keg. Now we're gonna put the main body aside for the minute and work on this lid. Now, as you can see, this lid is attached to the top piece by a bead weld that goes all the way around. So right now we're just gonna cut here. I'm gonna cut all the way around, separating this piece from this piece. Okay, so the lid is now done. Don't throw this piece away because we're going to use that to patch up these holes. Uh, what we're going to do now is return to the main body. I'm going to mark out the um, bottom door and also cut the vertical slits in it. Uh, once I've done that, then I can make up the hinges and the latch, weld them on and then cut the slits down. So the hinge and the latch will be all in the right place to keep it nice and sealed. Uh, so let's mark it out and cut it up. Let's do it. Okay, so I've got some steel in the vise ready to cut. This is just six mil steel plate, 30 mil wide. And then I'm just gonna have the hinges hinge on this 12 mil steel rod. Um, you can have any shape you want really, but I would recommend it being sturdy. I don't like opening those doors and feeling that they're flimsy. So this one's gonna be nice and sturdy. So let's get these cut out and I'll show you what they look like.
Okay, so the hinge is done. Now, I didn't have to use the mill or the lathe to make this up, but I thought it was a good opportunity to get some use out of those. This took me four hours though, so I feel like I'm on an episode of Project Binky. But let's get it welded to the trapdoor, and once the trapdoor is finished, I'll show you how this works. Okay, so that actually went quite well. Um, I put a little bit too much heat into the first couple um, and then I realized it's better just to tack, tack weld it on um, instead of actually doing full welds because this metal is pretty thin and then I'm welding a big hunk of metal to it. So I'll do that for the next couple of welds that I have to do. Now it's time for the hinge, which is I'm just going to use, this is actually a adjustment bolt off an alternator. Um, car garage, so car parts, it fits. Um, so this will hook into another piece of metal. So I'll make up that piece of metal, weld it on, and then I'll show you how it works. Okay, and the door is complete. I am so happy with it. Now, I did weld it with a gasless MIG, so uh, I'm no professional. Anyone can do this. If I can do it, you can do it too. This door works absolutely perfect. So it sits on a hinge pin right here, and that goes through both. I've just laid that up pretty easy. And then this little door, it sits anywhere I want it. So I can set it to a different and let different amounts of air into the fire. And then it just clutches on. And then it's all nice and solid there. Super happy. Now that door is done, we can move on to the grill plate. Now this being a car workshop, I have car parts in excess. And this is a disc rotor off my old VE SSV wagon that I'm not using. It's about 380 mil and it's going to be absolutely perfect. So we're going to suspend that in this keg about that high. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to drill some holes, put some nuts in there, weld them in, and then the disc should be able to sit down on those. I've only got four at the moment. Uh, I can leave that more if I need. Um, I'll see how it is. This is a heavy, heavy rotor. Um, so I do suspect that I might need more than just the four, but we'll put the four in and see if it's going to work and then we can actually put more in if we need. Now, I think I have enough air. It is a ventilated disc, so it's got air and it's actually smaller than the opening to the keg. So I believe air can come around the side and through all these nice holes, but we might 
actually drill some more holes in there. I'll depend how I'm feeling. So let's get that done. Let's drill some holes and put these bolts in. Oh yeah So I've just thrown some tacks on these bolts and nuts that I've put in and the disc sits perfectly, it's almost perfect size, look at that. So I've got a nice air gap all the way around and I don't think I'm going to need any more air because I'm going to have the air around here plus the air all through the holes so I'll be able to suck air in through the uh, ventilation part of the disc. It's going to get plenty of air. I'm super happy with that. So now we can move on. So next are the legs. Now I want this heater to be up off the concrete. So I've got a nice air gap all the way around it. If it's sitting on the concrete, then I feel like it's going to push a lot of heat down into that concrete where I don't want it. I want it to heat up the air, not the concrete. So I've got this steel pipe. It's a meter long. So I'm going to cut this into four and that'll be 250 mil up off the ground, which I think will be the perfect amount. So let's chop this up and get these mounted to the keg. So I've got the legs all on now. They're not welded down. So what I need to do now is adjust them all with the grinder to make sure they're all sitting exactly the same. So essentially what I need to do is make sure that they're straight up. That one is currently sitting, so it needs to be straight up. So I'll grind that so they're all straight. And what I need to make sure is they're all the same angle. This one's probably at the most angle. I'm gonna use an app on my phone called bubble level and you just put it up against it and it will tell you the degrees of it. Now it's not exact, but I don't need it to be exact. So this one seems to be my, the one with the most angle. So what I'll do is I'll grind the other three to make sure they match this one. And then that way they should mostly be even, but this isn't a science. Just I'm just gonna keep grinding till they look great and they measure up basically the same. I'm not too fussed because I will make all these flat and I'll show you how to do that after I get these welded on.
This thing is starting to look like a wood heater. It's a little bit wobbly. It's a little bit seesawy, but that is okay because I have an ultra precise leg leveling tool. Let's get it up on the bench and I'll show you this precise instrument. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you a highly tuned leg leveling tool and that is a pen on a bucket. So I'm just gonna run this all the way around and like so, all the way around on all four legs, and then I'll be able to cut them off at all the same height. This is absolutely genius. I'm feeling one of these, mm, yes. Now, unfortunately, I forgot to hit record when I was cutting the legs off, but you will have to believe me that the precision tool worked perfectly because it's perfect. And it's coming together so well. I am so happy with it. It's got plenty of air, so I'm not worried about that. You could use this as a really cool open top outside fire. That would be a totally cool thing to have for any backyard. But we're gonna put a lid on, and that's what we need to work on now. So I'm gonna put this on to the fire before I weld up these holes, because I'm worried it's going to warp the second I do that. So, and then I won't be able to get it on. So let's get this on to the fire, weld it up, and then I can weld up these holes. So the lid is on and I have to say that really sucked. It took forever. I did have to cut relief cuts into and around it just to make it fit on. I reckon the top was probably pressed on before it was welded. I uh, assumed it was just welded on and it'd be a nice fit, but it seemed like it was pressed on and then welded. So um, not to matter. It's on now. So let's get this tack welded on. And the top section is back on. It looks moderately okay. The welds came out okay. I'm not super impressed with them, but hey, it's not gonna come off and it's not gonna leak gases, which is all I want. Now it's time to patch up these holes on the side. And for that, I'm just gonna use a bit of cardboard and I'm going to transfer that onto the old lid. Uh, I'll transfer that on, cut them out, and then weld them in. Let's do that.
the top section is all done. So we've got the patches in. Terrible welds, I know, but it doesn't matter. It's going to work. So the next thing is this plate. This plate, ugh, ugh, ugh. So this plate is six mil steel. And what I'm gonna do is cut a slit in it, then use it as a door so I can put wood inside of it. Now, at the back there, I'll drill a four and a half inch hole and make up some hinges so we get a nice hinge door with a four and a half inch hole for the flue kit to come down. And then, and then we can make fire! I'm gonna use the vise and bend this rod into a handle shape. Not quite sure what kind of shape I'm gonna end up with. It depends how hard this is to bend. And it is almost done. All we need to do now is make up the hinges. I've got the hole cut, which took forever. Uh.
and it is almost done. This looks amazing. I am so happy with it. So I'm just waiting for my father-in-law to come over and help me install, well, install the flue kit because I don't do heights, obviously. And I've got this piece of wood that I want to make a handle here. So when it is hot, I can easily open this up. So let's get this on the drill press so we can drill some holes and then we can fit this. Boop, boop. And it is all in. The flu kit is in the roof. My fantastic father-in-law was able to get up on the roof and install the flu kit for me. Uh, thank you, Robbie, for doing that because I absolutely hate heights. Absolutely hate heights. But that means now we can make fire. Okay. So let's put some of these in. Like so. And I'm gonna use some fire lighters. Plenty of fire lighters. Can't go wrong with fire lighters. Put them all around like so. And then we'll build up a bit of this like so. And now I'm just going to light it with one of these. Yeah, boy. And we'll open the bottom door, giving it a nice amount of air, and we'll close that. Guys, I could not be happier. It is so warm. It's giving off so much heat. And all I've got is uh, kindling in there at the moment. So I think this has been a success. So if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe as it does help out the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Nice. <laughs> yeah, boy.